Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome the owners of my favorite burger joint ever. Ever. I'm not playing. Black Seed Burger Colt. Now, these two entrepreneurs just celebrated their second year of operation. And if my calculations are correct, and I carry the one minus the one, and we come up with a company that started right before a pandemic hit. This is a story about how two friends had to rethink how to grow their business while staying true to the mission, making everyone feel welcomed. And that is what I want to highlight today, how to make everyone feel welcome using customer service. Simple topic, I know, but let's dig into why it's important and why an entrepreneur should care. First, why is customer service important? Honestly, If you're asking yourself why you cannot verbally abuse a patron, then I'm not too sure I can help, but hopefully I can provide some insight into the importance of customer service, such as customer retention. According to business statistics, it costs roughly five times more to attract a new customer than it costs to retain an existing customer. Again, back to the verbal parade example above, if I'm the patron and I'm being slammed for requesting extra pepperoni on my pizza, I may be inclined to visit another non-judgmental establishment choosing to spend my money elsewhere. Additionally, great customer service always creates a great opportunity for word-of-mouth advertising. There is an old saying, do one good thing and someone may tell one person, do one wrong thing and it'll end up on social media or something like that. Who knows, really? Nonetheless, word-of-mouth advertisement is the best because, as my father says, free is the best price. But customer service needs to go beyond the customer is always right slogan. Sure, the intent of almost any business is to meet the needs of the customer. The definition of the customer may change, but the intent to meet their needs remains. But as the customer, someone like myself or others interacting with entrepreneurs and business owners The paying patron, in the example above, need to practice good customer service as well. Wait, what? Customers need to be good customers? The short answer, yes. According to the proceedings of the National Academy of Science of the United States of America study, the impact of the COVID-19 on small business outcomes saw 43% of businesses had temporary closed, and nearly all these closures were due to COVID-19. As I have said in previous episode, this podcast was created to highlight our local business owners and their businesses in hopes of reinvigorating our local economy. However, us as customers need to have better customer service skills when interacting with business owners and their staff. I know you all know what I'm talking about. We have all seen the Karen videos online, which I have to say, let's leave those individuals named Karen alone. That is one horrible generalization of all people named Karen, and I am looking in the mirror as I say this. I am not perfect, nowhere near it in my perspective, which is why I understand I need to be a better customer to serve, and I encourage my listeners to challenge themselves to be better customers to serve as well. I'm talking about being a better person to the individual serving us meals, a coffee, scanning our groceries, or even the person standing next to you in the grocery line. I use this example often, so I apologize if you have heard it before. But an example I give is we cannot go to the closet, put on the ugliest outfit, and blame the world for what we look like. We all have bad days. I get it. And those bad days usually happen first thing in the morning. We wake up late. We miss the bus. We can't find our car keys. We spill coffee on our pants. I get it. However... We cannot blame others. As I have spoken about often on this show, I have a long career in healthcare. This is an industry where we see individuals in their most vulnerable times. I recall a moment in my career when a guest approached me distraught and upset, tapping their hand on my desk to get my attention faster. Now, my reaction at this approach could have been met with the upset nature in which it may have been perceived to be delivered by the tapping on my desk. But my years in healthcare had taught me better. I simply asked, how may I help? I'm unsure where I parked my car. Now, for some, this may be a very interesting question. How could someone misplace their car? But on the campus where I work, the parking can be very confusing at best. 
Knowing this much and using the description of how the guests came to park, I decided to escort the individual to the parking garage I believed to be the correct one. After a few turns, the guests began to cry. Naturally, I apologized profusely, unsure what happened and inquiring of such. It turned out this individual had just been diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. I tell this story because that moment taught me that we do not know individual backstories. Passing quick judgment on others prohibits us from learning more. We never know. The person flipping the burgers may be the owner. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I have two guests, Mikey Williams and Donovan Collins, which I must admit are two co-owners of, I'm going to say it, my favorite burger place ever, right? Like right now, favorite, hands down, favorite burgers plate, Black Seed Burger Colt. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Great. Good. Thank you, thank you so much. First and foremost, for coming on the show today, I, I'm I'm being honest. I'm not I'm not pulling your chains. Favorite burger spot. So I want to kind of get into the burger spot first, but first I'm going to kind of introduce the world, Mikey. I'm going to go with you. Just introduce the world to Mikey. A quick little bio. Who is Mikey Williams? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one ever really wants to talk about themselves. So yeah, I mean, that's very true. A 44 year old dude living in Portland, at a co-owner in a restaurant. I like it. So, did you grow up in Portland? I did not. I moved here 16 years ago from Phoenix, Arizona. Nice. Donovan? I'm the same boat. 40-year-old <laughs> buck. Um, yeah, I'm from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, huh? Moved here 16 years ago, met Mikey, and then we ran ran with what we're doing. So how'd, how'd you guys meet? We met at our, la- our previous job. What was that? We used to work for Sizzle Pie. Oh, Okay. So did you guys kind of take, how did you guys kind of go with the idea from Sizzle Pie to Black Seed Burger Cult? We, um, I mean, kind of learned the ins and outs of how to run a restaurant, how to open restaurants, you know, things like that, you know. Uh, as much as we could, we felt we knew what we were doing. I mean, we still kind of do, but I mean, obviously there's always more that you think you know, but you obviously don't know. So uh, we had a, another uh, co- co-owner friend, uh, my, another Mikey, reach out and, you know, kind of, pitch an idea, you know, and he really believed in what we could do and kind of teamed up and went ahead and opened the restaurant. Nice. So for, for the listeners at home, what is Black Seed Burger Cult? Uh, s- something for everybody. We wanted to make a, a space where no one was excluded. So that's why everything on the menu can be made however you like, vegan, gluten-free, well, mostly gluten-free. Um, but just there's not one thing that can't be meat, vegan, veggie, it's, it can all be whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just want a place that's comfortable that anyone can go to and not feel like they had to ask for special instructions. Yeah. So just everything's up for grabs, you know? Yeah, we wanted also to, we felt like uh, with a lot of, you know, it's Portland. Everywhere's got vegan veggie options, but a lot of burger spots, you know, everything's still cooked on the same flat top, same fryers, everything. So we wanted that. We also got a, you know, a separate vegan flat top, vegan fryer. Wow. So that way everything's completely, you know, there's no cross contamination and that way you can get your vegan burger. It's not cooked in any burger juice. And that's a big point. I think, you know, people misconstrue that. Like that's kind of a big thing because they like it to be separated from their, I have a lot of vegan friends myself and I actually, when I'm barbecuing, I make sure there's like a special spot on the grill 
and I'm not putting meat on it because they prefer not to have that meat juice on it. Yeah. Now, why was it important to have a kind of a space like this that was so welcoming? Because everybody's worth the same, you know? Like, <clears throat> there's no... You can't be like, oh, dude, like, fuck off. Like, we only have dairy cheese or whatever. So we yeah. try to just... Everybody gets what they... They're, needs are you know or met yeah no i, I get it yeah we travel <coughs> a lot together on the road for our past job to a lot of other states and you know, going to eat together obviously we both have different diets so uh we want we're always looking for a place that we can both go to and so it's we you know, wanted to make sure that we were able to offer that so why why burgers why not pizza why not pasta why not something else burgers are fun man pizza's <laughs> <a good laughs> way to to burgers <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I think that that might be pizza is the gateway drug to burgers. <laughs> I think I like that one. So, so let's, let's talk about kind of how, we're, how did it start? How did, uh, how did Black Seed Burger Co- start? Um, it's just started with an idea that we didn't want bosses anymore. And um, t- talking to our, our buddy Mikey, who was part owner, um, we just wanted to do something that was 100% what exactly what we wanted to do. Um, and you know, burgers, <laughs> you know, yeah. our other part, we have another partner in John. He as well loved burgers as well. I mean, it was completely a new concept to me. I mean, I've obviously eaten burgers, but you know, I've been in the pizza game for so long, you know, so it was exciting to kind of go with something fresh. And after meeting up with Donovan, he's like the kitchen wizard with as far as recipes and stuff and kind of come up with whatever, just, uh, you know, tasted this, this and this and. Okay, this, I think we have something here. So, do you feel there's a lot of similarities between the the, the world of pizza and the world of burgers? Not much. Yeah, I mean, you fold a piece of pizza and you got a sandwich as well. So. <laughs> it's very true. So, when you guys started this business, so, you know, for the listeners at home, you know, this is a show about business. Did you guys kind of go LLC, S corp, C corp? How did you guys start to decide to start the business? We did an LLC. Nice. And how long have you guys been in business? Next week will be two years. Nice. Nice. So now did you guys, how'd you guys do funding? Grassroots funding? Did you guys actually go help, out for help or, or you just all funded by yourself? All funded. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yep. How was, how was that? Was that difficult? Yes. It, it's, uh, it's difficult either way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was definitely, I mean, you always think, you know, your dollar's going to go farther than it does. And then no matter what, the build out equipment, this, that, there's always a, a hiccup or something you're just not expecting. Mm-hmm. So. Now, is this your guys' first business? It is. Yes. What are some of the surprises that you guys seen? Uh, the cost. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard. Anybody that opens their own business, <clears throat> they have a lot of, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of, um, you can't really foresee the cost of what it's going to end up being at the end of it when you're open. And uh, that was probably the toughest part. And then obviously the pandemic, you know. Like that, that almost killed us. Yeah, you guys started right during that time, right? Started about four and a half to five months before it happened. Wow. So it was, it was that March, we looked at the numbers and we we're kind of like, wow, like for a new business, like we're actually really getting some steam, starting to do well. I think this is going to happen. And right. And two weeks later, everything shut down. Wow. Yeah, and lose, we had to let all our employees go, and that was heartbreaking. Oh. Um, and then Mikey and I have just been the only two people there, like almost 80 hours a week. Until we just hired someone last week. And that's, that's since March of 2020. It has just been you two. Yes. Mm -hmm. And your guys are six days a week. Yes. What? Usually actually seven because Mondays we'll go in and do the financials and try to, you know, rifle through all the bills, all the emails, you know, and everything like that. Try to do it at the end of the night, but sometimes you're just too burnt out. But you know, so but it's still got to be done. Yeah. What? You know, one of the things I, I tend to talk about often is you know hear from these entrepreneurs is the difficulty of running their own business because you're kind of by yourself, but you kind of have each other. How how has that helped through this process? It's got its ups and downs. I mean, I wouldn't want to work with anybody, but Donovan, you know, so closely you're six feet apart in the kitchen where no matter how well you know somebody or how good of friends you are, you're going to butt heads regardless. You're, you're exhausted. You're stressed. You have no idea what's going on. And so, you know, 
<clears throat> we take the ups and the downs and just at the end of the day, we kind of go over what our issues were, deal with it, and move on and realize like it's going to benefit us both in the long run, and this is what we want to be doing no matter what. We knew there's going to be issues with it, as everybody should know going into opening anything. There's going to be struggles you don't know, and you just got to be able to communicate well. Yeah. You know, one of the things, you guys are kind of in an area where, especially burgers in, in Portland, where it's high competition. How do you guys, how did you guys like, differentiate what you're doing to become known? Very, you know, very known. Well, I mean, I, th- I think that we don't believe that we're a competition. You know, we try to b- be different. Yeah. Um, but we don't, you know, flaunt it. But it's nice that when people do come in, they're like, you know, like, what the fuck? Like, how can I get <laughs> vegan bacon on whatever, you know, um, and it's actually good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're right across the street from a few burger places, which is weird. It's like the McDonald's Burger King competition. But, <laughs> yeah. but we never th- think of those places as competition. We're just another restaurant. You know, like th- they don't have what we have. So yeah, we don't do what they do. Yeah, so they're not they're not in the on the line, you know. And it was yeah. definitely tough during the pandemic cuz it I think what is the first 6 months almost everybody on Mississippi shut down except for the burger places. So it was just us three burger spots that were open. So that was definitely even more of a like hey, how do we work this out to where we have something that other people don't offer. So I think a lot of it too, you know, with the Donnie and ours like recipe background and making most things from scratch and then with our vegan burgers we didn't just opt out and go with the impossible burger as everybody does we kind of got a product that we can make and mold our own burgers from and make it our own so that way you know keep it completely different and we sourced out our buns be made locally every day so wow that's that i'm not gonna lie your guys burgers are delicious I, i can't overstate this enough you know, and, and that's one of the things I was trying to, how how to differentiate yourself, you know, to the other burger spots, because I, I would imagine it's so difficult sometimes, but you're doing it in a, such an organic way where you're just kind of being true to yourself, and that in itself is, is creating your differentiator, it yeah. seems like. Yeah, I mean, we're just two guys that know what we like. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, we don't have, like, a secret sauce Sort of. <laughs> we have our, our, our killer diller sauce, which is better than ranch. It's delicious. We don't. Yeah. There's no ranch in the building ever. There's um, no ranch. But yeah, we do a we do a. It's a vegan, gluten free, um, house sauce, killer diller, and um, that's kind of another pivoting point. We're like, we need to bottle this and sell it. Cause in the past, we have tried to do this with another company, and it didn't work out. <clears throat> and then Mikey went ahead and found out how to just do it we banged it out in like six weeks and um it's still like it's still out there it's just tight and we get a lot of inspiration from other burger places obviously you know you try something you don't want to completely copy what someone else is doing but you try something like oh let let me do my take on how i would do this like i want to use what they did on this but add this to this make it a little bit different yeah so do you guys currently bottle the uh your sauce we do and you guys are selling at retail, or is it you sell it only there at this store? It's at the shop. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's at it's at our shop. They sell it at Scotty's Pizza Parlor, and then nice. um, Red Sauce Pizza just started carrying it. Oh, Besides, perfect. they're going to eventually start selling bottles as well. We'd like to move it into retail. Yeah, but you know, it's like you don't want to take that first step too hard. Totally, because it could either tank or it could go out of control. Which with that problem, where do you spend your time? Do I focus on bottling this or do I focus on actually still running the that, restaurant? That is a started, very, so. very great point. And that's such a smart, smart point, especially for the listeners at home to understand not to take on everything at once, right? There's, there's a process and it sounds like you guys kind of took that process in stride, especially during the pandemic. How was staying open um, during that time on you? You're kind of like your psyche. I'd imagine you guys were just working constantly. How'd you guys kind of go th- get through that? It was tough. Like, n- like no shit. Like, it was really hard. It still is. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, we're still in it, right? <clears throat> you lose track of days, weeks, months. Yeah, it's it's really weird. But yeah, it was really difficult as well because with mo- I mean, as you've been to the restaurant, it's it, we were perfectly set up for takeout where you come in the breakfast side of the restaurant mm-hmm. and we have the table so you can just walk in. But at the same time, 
we're in the kitchen the entire time, so people walking by Mississippi walk by and see an empty restaurant on the inside. So the majority of people mm. thought we were closed the entire time. Dang. Even though we'd have signs saying we're open, but more people are visual, want to see people, they don't read signs, no matter where you put them. <laughs> so it's, it was difficult for so many people that live in the building above us to say, I'm glad you're finally reopened. You know, let them, we, we've never closed. You know, we've been here every day. So it's just, that was the hardest struggle, trying to get educate people, like, we are open. You yeah. Know, like, we're not here just hanging out. The blinds aren't up for no reason. We're in the back cooking. So it's, yeah. it's hopefully going to get easier. We reopened the lobby yesterday. Nice, so nice. Dine in now, so mm-hmm. yeah. In fact, you know, that's kind of let's get into that a little bit. Let's let's get into the the branding a little bit because I want to talk about the the Black Seed um, Burger Cult logo, which is kind of cool. What does that represent? Which one? You, the there's the burger guy and then the burger. The I, the I like the burger line. guy. Yeah. So that's Mikey. The, Mikey be able to answer that one the, better. The, yeah, the uh, Mikey McKinley Boss Dog. He does Boss Dog art. He uh, designed that. Um, he's just been an amazing graphic design guy him as well as john have always they, they've always done like the graphic is for, for the restaurant and mikey came up with that concept um i think he drew it and instantly it wasn't like oh let's go back to the drawing board we should try this it was just like that's it that's the best thing i've ever seen and he took that one step and was like you know i know a neon sign place that can pull this off and to my surprise they actually did i actually had doubts and because you know you take an art piece and then trying to put it into another format and it doesn't always translate. Yeah. And that one really worked and it's I mean, it's the greatest thing you walk down this and you see it <laughs> it's shining cool. out. It, it makes me like no matter how stressed out I am in a day, <laughs> I, I pull up to the shop and see that and I'm in a better mood. I like it. it it's it's uh, a it, for those folks at home that have not been able to see this um this hamburger kind of thing. You gotta Bur- check it burger out. Burger guy. Burger guy. Yeah, burger guy. I think it's a throwback from like an old 60s, so, 70s, like biker kind of graphic of you know some weird little creature flipping you. Yep, <laughs> it's cool. I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna save the listeners the entire details because I am gonna encourage them to actually go and check it out in person. And while you're there, actually grab a burger because they are <laughs> so delicious. So you know, going through this process, you know, this is your first your first business. You said, what advice would you have individuals that are thinking of going into starting their own business? What advice would you have for them? <clears throat> Just know what you want to do. For like first, you know, like don't don't half ass your idea and then um follow through with it. Um also just get ready to hit the fucking bumps, you know. Yeah. Yeah, make as little compromise as you can. I mean you always have to in business somewhere, but stay true to what you want to do. Know going into this that you're not opening a restaurant and you're sitting at home in an office collecting money a couple months later. If you're not in the kitchen, if you're not at the restaurant actually doing physical work the first couple of years, people might think it might, you know, one year I'm good. No, you're going to be there all the time. If you want to at least keep it true to what you want to do, you need to be there. You can step away. The minute you step away, things start to change if it's out of your control. But just, uh, you know, stay focused on what you want to do and why you did it. You might fail at it, but that doesn't mean you're a failure. Yeah. It's just, it's tough to do a business, but just keep sticking at it. And just, work, you got to work your ass off. Yeah. Would, would you guys uh, do anything different? Um, Somewhat. I mean, we came from a place that had so many employees. So when we went into this, we only had seven to eight. Uh, probably could have scaled that back a little bit going in until, you know, you can tweak it out. The pandemic's really, well, it also made me a better cook. So now I know, like, what we can shave off and how to save. Because, I mean, any restaurant, the payroll is your biggest expense. Yeah. So anywhere you can help with that, you know, just be willing to do the work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, don't don't think the shit's going to make itself, you know, like you have to be there to do it. So, yeah. What did you know, looking back on everything, what advice would you would you guys give your younger selves before you kind of ventured into this business? That's that's a tough one, man. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, <coughs> I'd try to say things that I think I would say, but I, I, I don't want to be too, like, egotistical or what. I think I learned a lot of what I didn't need to do or what I shouldn't do from uh, working at Sizzle Pie. It kind of humbled me to be, like, I'm a very opinionated and vocalized person, <laughs> which is not always a good thing in business, especially if you're the one talking to the customer. You may have your opinions, but you do have to bite your tongue because not everybody's on the same page as you. But just going into and being accepting 
you know, what other people say, and but it's still sticking to what you want to do. Just, you know, just write it out. It's not going to always be easy. So. Yeah. On that one, I, anybody that wants to open anything with the service industry, um, you have to put on an act sometimes when you're dealing with a person that's very, very either disrespectful or, you know, whatever. You can't kick everybody out. Yeah. So it's kind of fun to play with them and, <laughs> like, you know, kill them with kindness kind of thing. Oh, I love it. I, I, that's my thing. <clears throat> yeah, it's the best. You can, and, they're, and then they think they left a victory, but really, you know, they're goofs, you know, they, whatever. Yeah, like, was, but people like that are everywhere. It was so hard during the pandemic to, we had to bite our tongues a lot because we don't really put it out there that we're the owners. You know, obviously a lot of people, once the pandemic came and they figured it out after, you know, all they saw was us. And then they, a lot of, we got a lot of flat because we'd randomly be closed, but, you know, we were burnt out. Yeah. We had to have to take personal days and a lot of people were you know, like, oh, you're lazy. You know, like your boss should fire you. You guys need to start showing up. Like, well, we, we, we are the bosses. We work in every day. Once I think more people saw that it's like, wait, it is just us trying to keep this going. Then people, were, they completely 180. Everyone was so kind and so nice. But in the beginning... And I'm not taking away anything from anybody. Everybody, you know, is in a stressful situation. So I just don't think people knew how to communicate to others. So I think there was a lot of venting from both sides. Everybody doing this to talk to people. So customer service was a very hard thing to be in. Yeah. And then that's, that's a great point for the listeners at home. Burnout. Like burnout's a big issue. You know, we're all burnt out. I think you look at every industry. You look at healthcare. You look at the food industry. You look at any industry across the board on the economic spectrum and we're burnt out, right? We're all very, very tired. And so it, it's a great opportunity just to really take a moment, be nice to one each other, be kind. There's folks busting their butt to like you guys, right? You guys are busting <coughs> your butt to just bring us a meal. That's mm-hmm. it. A simple meal. And a thank you goes a long way, right? Understanding that we don't know the other person's shoes. We, you, I always talk about this in customer service training, right? When you when you wake up, you don't put on the ugliest outfit and then blame the world for what you look like, right? You just can't do it, right? You just can't do it. Everybody has a bad day, and it tends to be first thing in the morning, right? Either you spilled coffee on yourself, you are got stuck in traffic, you're late for work or something. It always happens bad the first thing, right? But again, you, you can't blame the world for what you look like kind of thing. But this pandemic has showed us one thing is we got to be kind to one another. Like we're, we're all struggling we're all burnt out. We're all tired. We just have to be better about being kind to one another because I, again, I'm going to state it again. I absolutely love the burgers. I, I want to continue to see you guys around so much. So how, how can, how can we help? How can we get the name out there for the folks that are interested in black seed burger cult? Where can they follow you on the socials? Where can they find your guys's location? I mean, just check us out. <clears throat> um, I mean, we have a website, black seed burger cult.com. Right? Same as our Instagram, or, or something yep. like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're we're not we're not like gearheads on the the net, you know. Yep. Um, but you know, our bandwidth is pretty large. Yeah, um, we're working on the, the social media a little more. So yeah. Out there. Um, but yeah, we're just. Um, we're on Mississippi three seven four six North Mississippi in between Beach and Failing. Holy North smokes! North. What a there you go. Yeah. That was that was direct. I like well, it. Yeah, yeah, tell them what's our numbers nine seven one five four four seven two seven seven. Reach us there. And again, this is open for everybody. Yes. Vegans. This everybody. is not just, not just a hamburger for folks that don't want vegan food, right? It's yeah, everybody. Just, just everybody. I mean, yeah, just let us know what you want and we'll make it. Um, but yeah, uh, very good. We, every, there's no gluten aside from our bread and then our, our vegan bacon, vegan sausage. But other than that, everything can be made vegan, gluten-free, meaty, veggie, whatever, you know. Yeah, Donovan making the gluten-free fried chicken I thought was a game changer for <laughs> that one trips up people the most yeah that yeah. I'm I'm not gonna lie when I saw that I was like what that that's no way and it's delicious yeah. I, it's, a, it's very simple to do I mean we're not gonna reveal all the secrets right away. don't do it it's uh but yeah we have gluten-free fried chicken it's solid come I, on down it's come on down <laughs> go over on Mississippi North Mississippi tell them Gabe sent you I'm not sure. It's probably not going to get you anything, but they're just going to be like, okay, cool. You heard the podcast. Get so you okay. a high five, at least. <laughs> I will say, uh, stepping into here, that I, I decided that right off the bat you're a trustworthy person because you do drink Coca-Cola Classic. <laughs> Dude, Pepsi rules. <laughs> no, 
the Pepsi's the best. This is where you start to, you know, you yeah, this is where the button heads comes in. That's six feet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, check. We also I, now we're talking about soda. Um, RC is the best. Oh, uh, and, yeah. Okay. So we yeah we got an RC fountain. Fair um, enough. RC yeah. is yeah. So you know, fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> RC is the, RC is the king. I will I will give you that. RC is kind of the shit right there. Although I, I tend to if I'm gonna do Pepsi products, it's gonna be Mountain Dew. Yeah, Dew Man. I'm a Dew Man. You get extreme. I'm gonna get extreme. I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna like do some Dew and play like Final Fantasy VII on the PS4. Swear to God, I'm a nerd out. What's Are you that? From the Midwest. No, born and raised here in Oregon. Uh, yeah, Mountain Dew always seemed to be like yeah. the diehards are from the Midwest. I tried Surge back in the day when it came out. Oh, uh-huh. I remember that. Yeah. That wasn't good. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, knee, knee deep in a cool can of Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, dude, my Oof. pee was coming out like neon green after uh-huh. that surge. I don't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> That's what I kept telling them. But don't worry, <laughs> it's the vitamins, Doc. It's fine. It's and the just... vitamins and surge. <laughs> so again, folks at home, check out Black Seat Burger Cult. Guys, thank you again so much for coming over and talking about your company. I'm, again, very a big fan. I hope that you guys continue to be successful Folks at home, please come check them out. Black Seed Burger Colt, Mikey Donovan. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.